Mr. Stark is in the building. How you doing, my man? Here we are. Happy um, Friday. How's your world? What's going on? Yeah, I'm not bad, mate. How are you doing? Always good, mate. Always good. Sun is shining. We're living life. So, <laughs> very exciting news for yourself, turning pro. So, what's inspired this, then? Um, well, it's the old lockdown, really. I mean, with how long I've not had a fight for now, and I was, I was contemplating having maybe one more fight and then turning pro anyway. But with how long we've been out now, I'd, I'm just going to go for it. You know what I mean? This, mm. I've got nothing holding me back, so why not? So regards of the transition in itself, then, like regards of what people get from the experience of amateur, what of that do you feel you've got enough of in that sense? Again, I'm going to ask you a lot of these sort of questions again. There's no right or wrong answer. It's more just how you sort of see it. So like, obviously, is it four fights in now, four or five amateurs you've had? Six. Six. Okay, sorry, Tapology says about the three or four of it. So a fair bit of yeah. experience there. Is it when it step up to pro, is it a case of your a certain skill set you feel you've hit as such, hit a bit of a wall? Is it just the next level you want to test yourself? What is that transition like for you at this sort of point? It's a bit of everything, really. I mean I I personally feel I've got the skills to be able to go into the pro level. Um my coaches believe I've got the skill otherwise it wouldn't did They'd have told me otherwise, you know what I mean? I mean, my head coach, Christian, he doesn't, he don't blow smoke up nobody's ass. you know what I mean? If if I'm not ready, he'd have told me. Absolutely, um, you know about it. Yeah, um, I don't think I've let people see the real side of me yet, which is quite disappointing. I know I can do better than what my performances show. Um, I, I just believe myself, mate, really. I, I think I'm ready and I want that challenge, so... I mean, this is sort of the biggest point in itself. And the reason I ask that kind of question is, again, it's very ambiguous. There's no set amount of fights you need to have. There's no set measurements in this bit and bob. But ultimately, one, you need to believe in yourself. And two, you need people around you who aren't yes people who are going to tell you, you know, this is where you're at. Because not being funny, your coach telling you you're ready when you're not doesn't help anyone. So for him to have confidence in yourself is always good reassurance sort of stuff. Now, regards of your general fight preps in themselves, are they all quite very intricately managed? Is it... Are you one of these boys who sort of sneaks off for ages, gets fat, comes back, hey, I've got to fight, I've got to get in shape. Are you pretty full-time? What are you like when it comes to training and competing consistency? I, I, I pretty much train all year round when I can. I don't like... I need exercise. I'm one of them people who needs routine. If I've not got that, I'll absolutely go to pot. Do mm. you know what I mean? I, I love training, whether it be for a fight or just general fitness. So I'm never really out of shape. I'm never overweight, so to speak. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like my food. Don't we all? Like, I'll absolutely am my food in between fights, but I'm, I'm not out of shape, so I'm always about ready to go. Do you have quite a big cut, or is it pretty sensible? Uh, I walk around at, like, 66, and bantamweight 61 and a half, so no, not a big cut, really. It's pretty sensible, and as to say, with that in itself, and is that something you feel you're quite comfortable? with? stay there for um pro? Would you go down to feather flyweight? Sorry. Oh no, I wouldn't make flyweight, mate. Not a chance. Not a chance. Uh, bantamweight, bantamweight's fine for me. Like I say, I can walk around comfortably, 66, 67, get down to what, 64, cutting like fat, body fat, and then the rest with water, and I feel healthy. At that I feel strong, quick. And I, I won't want to jeopardise a performance just by trying to get mm. that weight advantage like you see fighters do. Well, this is where these sort of questions sort of come into account because in that transition, as much as obviously the skill and all that sort of transition period, it's more sort of saying, okay, this is where you find out what you're capable of, where you have your sort of, I know, the best version of you really. Now, regards yeah. of stepping things up to that next level, what do you think is going to be the first point of priority? Is it going to be like, certain drills you're doing is it intensity what you're already doing is it rescheduling everything how are you gonna change what you're doing now to then taper up to a pro level if i think we'll pretty much do what we are doing now obviously there'll be more the tech uh, like specifics on like the rounds for such i'm going from three minutes to five minutes so it's mm. learn i've got to learn how to manage my energy more efficiently now do you know what I mean? I'm quite an explosive fighter, so trying to go flat out five minutes each time, do you get what I mean? Like for three rounds, it's going to be a step up. 
so I need to I need to learn how to manage my energy more. Um, the drills we do, like the the wrestling drills we do, I mean they're pretty taxing. Like the wrestling drills we do, the quite I want to cry at the end of them. Do you know what I mean? It's the bad. Um, so I don't think anything on that side will be too much of an issue. Obviously, I'm going to need to eventually step up and go for more sparring in different gyms, you know, with guys a lot better than me. I need to get my arse kicked so I can see where I'm at and how to improve. I mean, you've got a pretty good gym down where you're at, BST. Mm. I mean, some good lads down there with what I've seen. So yeah, we've got quite a nice mix there. Don't worry about that. We get beat. My shine has gone down quite nicely. So here we are. We're all good. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, with that being said in itself, we tend to get quite a, a mix at our gym regards. If we have the odd open sparring session, everyone's welcome, whatever, no politics. No, everyone says that, but anyway, we, we have quite a mix. And one of the sparring partners we tend to have is one of your mates, Antonio Luca. Now, how are you with training oh, with yeah. guys um, you fought before? Is it a case of, you know, you've got them as seen as they're an opponent, you can't train with them at all? Is it a case of, okay, you might fight me down the line, we'll keep it separate? Are you not fussed? Where are you with training with people you might, I don't know, come up against in the future? No, I, 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 I wouldn't have a problem with that. I mean, it's all experience and at day. You're going to come across people. Mm. Like you say, I've fought Antonio. I might fight Antonio again in pros because I know he's not far off ready to go pro. Mm. So, but I'd have no problem sparring with him. I've, I don't I don't dislike anybody in the sport. Do you know what I mean? I'd, I'd happily mix it up with people on the mat, in the cage. It don't bother me, mate. Not... I'm not that kind of guy who'd let it simmer over into training. So, yeah, I'd be more than happy. So where that question comes from, it's not a case of sort of liking, disliking as such, but more a case of you build a relationship with people and everything else. And obviously you pick up tendencies, you sort of know each other's sort of styles. And obviously, you know, who's got whose number to an extent. And then when it comes to, okay, we've been been matched up, it's then, okay, are we going to put what you've built to one side? The whole Kamara Usman and Gilbert Burns kind of thing. Obviously, that's yeah, the extreme yeah. end of things. But again, someone you sort of build a thing. Like you see it with Sam Creasy and Jake Hadley and MK Jor. It's one of those sort of things. Okay. It's a professional relationship. It's not a case of liking or liking each other, but then what? So that's where that comes from. But it's good that the fact you're open-minded to it. Because again, if you're, say, at a bantamweight sparring session, everyone's 61 kgs, there's a good chance one of those might be an extra opponent. Yeah, we're going to cross paths. <laughs> you know what I mean? mean? <laughs> yeah. But again, this is sort of... Like, that's a question for you. Could you fight a teammate if push came to shove? If you say the next event for whatever match it is, someone, a current training partner, or at least a former one you're quite close with? I, you know what? You know, the very first fight I had, it was um, it was like my, my uh, club put the show on. So it was like white collar star, but we did yeah. fight each other. And the guy I ended up fighting... When I very first joined the gym, I was training with him and his brother, and they were stopping behind sessions, helping me, help getting getting the experience in with them. And then I ended up fighting one of them, and it sucked. Like I hated it. Like I didn't want to hit him. <laughs> it, yeah. it, 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 it was one of them weird ones. But end of day, it's a fight. If he didn't hit me, if I didn't hit him, he was going to hit me. So I think it's. I mean, luckily enough as well, no one in my gym at the minute is my weight. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have that problem at the minute. So I couldn't quite answer it. But I don't I don't know, mate. I just couldn't tell you again. <laughs> this is, I mean, it's one of those weird ones that, again, it's all one and good saying it now, even if you had an answer. Like, that's not the case yet. But again, with your main training partners, are they quite a bit bigger than you? A lot of like featherweights and lightweights. Are they much bigger than you? Same sort of size? Or what sort of weight difference is there? <laughs> It, it ranges like, yeah, there's feather, what we got, featherweight, lightweight. I think we go all the way up to light heavy, I think. Mm-hmm. And like I say, yeah, I'm, I'm easily the smallest guy in the fight team. So, yeah, I get ragged all over the place. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. But it's good. Like, I enjoy, I enjoy being with the bigger guys. I'd rather wrestle with the bigger guys. So when I do come to somebody my size, I don't feel... Honestly, I can be in trouble. But if I can manipulate the body of, say, an 80, 84-kilogram guy, put somebody in at 61, I'll feel a bit a bit more confident, should I say. Oh, do you know what I mean? Mm. I mean, apart from Antonio, he was strong as fuck. He is, isn't like, he? <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, this is the thing. Antonio is one of my favorite sparring partners for that sort of reason. Again, one, he's just a good person to sort of get that pace right, the competitive kind of back and forth without sort of injuries. But again, yeah. he just, he's fucking durable, man. Like, he doesn't gas. He just keeps on fucking going. And Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I ended up with, it's horrible. I, list, I listened to the podcast he did with you. And then when he, I think he said it was the fight with me. He says, oh, I had a bad weight cut. He cut like six kilograms in a day. And going in, going into that third round, I thought, fucking hell, he's, he's still got something tank here. He's strong as fuck. And then when I heard him say that on the podcast, I was like, well, I wouldn't have known. Like, do you know what I mean? It, it was, was bad. I remember yeah. the same at the weigh-ins because, again, like, I fought that same card. I fought a lightweight. So that cut for me was pretty calm. I was a couple of kilos. I was done. But, um, yeah, he was saying he was quite heavy the night before. All the bin bag runs and this, that, and the other thing. Nah, fuck that noise, man. I don't want yeah. that sort of overnight stress to just keep on. Uh, uh, it makes people ask. Oh, I can't explain it. Well, I can't get my words out. It stressed me out too much thinking about it. But to See, say what, it, I'm, what are you fighting at now, Dan? You've dropped down to featherweight now, haven't you? So I'm featherweight, but I was featherweight pre-COVID. I don't know if I'm featherweight post-COVID. That's another conversation. <laughs> I signed up post-COVID, <laughs> but we'll see what we see. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the beard. I'll say it's all, I'm holding it here, my patchy beard and my thick haircut. Yeah, you'll have to do a Johnny Hendricks and shave it all up. <laughs> this is it. Hopefully I'll still, you know, perform what we see. But, but this is where it gets interesting. I mean, like, obviously you saw the fight I got a chin, which was lovely. But again, the size-wise, it wasn't the be and end all. So maybe I'll go back up to lightweight, but eh, I'll see what we see. It's more, I don't make the whole camp around cutting weight, really. Like, again, like yourself, we did cut about five, six kilos. It's, it's a sort of on the week of week two weeks before think about it, but it's not the main focus. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean now it's a lot easier because I'm more clue upon nutrition. Whereas I, I find I find making weight easier now. I'm at a light weight than when I was at featherweight. You know, mm. because I didn't know about nutrition properly. Everything was a I don't know, I was panicking over like point three or point four. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. just. It, there was no need to worry, but the, yeah, it's, it's one of them weird ones. For anyone who wants a bit of nutritional help, Dean Kirk Nutrition's your man. Little plug there, he's my boy. <laughs> so the reason I started working with him is for that exact reason. Because as much as like I've got my own experience and qualifications in like training and whatever else, it's not the point. When you're sat there, if you have to cut weight for a certain event, people will appreciate this. You see your point too heavy than you started at. You think, shit, I'm a fat cat. I can't lose this. I'm going to be overweight. I'm going to miss weight. Shit, 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 shit. Thinking, yeah. It's not that bad. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> it's terrifying. But also, disclaimer, don't cut loads of water weight. This, that, and the other. It's, pisticuffs is not liable for anyone killing themselves making weight. <laughs> I've got to make that very fucking clear. I don't want anyone to think, oh, Dan said it's all right. It's calm. It's not. <laughs> Dreadful. Now, regards to your fight prep in itself versus general sort of training in itself, where do you see much of a difference? Is it just conditioning outside of the sessions? Is it in the sessions are different? Is it opponent focused? What does your camp look like opposed to usual training? Um, we've never we've never really done opponent specific because literally every fight I've gone into, I've had two or three different opponents. You know what amateur level was like, yeah. and so you. I think on because I, I had two fights and I had a, I had quite a long layoff, and on the fight when I came back, I think I had five opponents. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I had one, I had a new opponent an hour before the fight, so we've never really done opponent specific. The only thing that really gets different is like the training drills, like the intensity. We're, we're always drilling anyway. I mean, you should always be drilling, yeah. but. Like, like I was saying earlier, the wrestling drills, it's a lot of take and down, get up, take and down, get up, take and down, get up. Do you know what I mean? It's just mm. constant up, down. Um, we do a lot more like old school running style, like hill running, uh, carrying each other up hills. You, you, you know what yeah, I'm yeah, about. Yeah, grafting here. You just, just up in it, mate, really. That's all it is. Just the intensity gets harder. We, we're pretty much training the same all year round. It's just when it's time to push it, it, it gets pushed. Were you training that as a tap or snap store? Yes, mate. Well, they've, re they've rebranded it. It's Resurrection MMA okay. now. 
Well, and for a for rebound yeah. as well. That's perfect. So what's that yeah. sort of environment like? Is it quite a is it quite a family sort of gym? Is it quite mixed levels? Is it like a fighters gym? Is it quite a small place? Is it quite a big place? I don't know how much about it. It it's more of a family gym now. Like the, there is a lot of um we'll get a lot of people coming in to just get fit and healthy. for real. The fight mm. team's quite small at the minute. I think they'd I think there's only like five or six of us, maybe. But there is more guys coming through the doors wanting to compete, which is, is brilliant for me and anyone else who's wanting to fight. The more, well, you'll know yourself, you've got mm. quite a big gym and a lot of guys wanting to compete. If you've got a room full of killers, mm. it's good news for everybody, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, this is where different environments help with different things. So obviously you get, you get such a mix. But again, it depends on what you need. And this is the huge thing for everyone listening. Don't feel the need you have to go to the elite of the elite with everyone here if the place you're at is building you a lot. Because again, say if you understand the language your coach uses, the way they deal with you, the way you build you up, that could be so much more beneficial. They could tell you certain things. You'll take a high percentage of that through. Then if you take a high level coach, but he's talking like John Danaher, you don't you get bored by the time he's finished speaking. You haven't taken anything he said in. It could be golden information, but you take a percentage of 2% of that. What's, what's that? Whereas at least 60, 70% of someone giving you solid information is still valid. Because this is yeah, where I think exactly. people are rushing off to like these amazing gyms to train with so-and-so. Like, like this is where this, I find there's so much, what's the word? This sort of facade of, oh, I train with the killers and I'm this, that and the other. I said, well, yes and no. Like I train with pros in the class, but I don't spar Modestus. He's fucking like everywhere. He's a big old boy in the UFC. He ain't going to spar with me. Oh yeah. I'll yeah, get yeah, squished. Definitely. Fuck that noise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to spar with him. He's a lovely bloke, but he'd squish me. Yeah, I fuck that. And I just felt like a child. It was horrible. I'm not wrong. With <laughs> I like him, but I'm not going to try him with him. <laughs> so, see what I mean? But again, it's yeah, exactly. A huge thing with training in general is very proactive. Is what you do. It's not what's there for you as such. Again, that's another conversation in itself. Regards of your understanding and development, are you more? Do you prefer just mindless sort of drilling in the sense of okay, I'm doing this one technique for this one position, rinse and repeat. I've got it glued here, there, or is okay? I have to really ask loads of questions to try and understand it. Do you write stuff out? How do you understand stuff? How do you learn stuff from scratch? Um, I'm I'm quite a visual learner. Like mm. I, I do pick things up quite quickly. As soon as I've seen my coach do a move, I'm. I look for the finer details of the things that make the mm. technique work. It's all right trying to blitz through it, make it look fancy, but if you're missing the finer details, do you know what I mean? I've started logging down a lot of things. Like I take a little notebook training with me now and I'll write a lot of things down, like key points, what I need to focus on. Like, like say with the techniques, you're drilling it, drilling it. It can become monotonous. Mm but you need to understand those finer details for it to work. So I'm going to try and ask the same question, but in a different format now. So again, you've sort of said visual, understand sort of key points. Again, if stop me if I say anything wrong again. So again, understand key points, yeah. picking the details there. Is it a case of you're picking up concepts of a technique saying, okay, single leg takedown, for example, okay, he can't base there, I drive there. Or is it, okay, I need this certain grip to do this certain movement, this certain A to B to C to D? Or is it, okay, I get this, there's no space there, let's do it. Like, how intricate are these steps for you? Is it quite a very point-by-point point focus? Or is it very much, okay, how do I explain this? Do you get where I'm coming from again? It's more so every individual step is there. Or is it, okay, there's a general premise, I can run with that. What is it for you? I, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. Um oh it's a really yeah, weird I I, yeah how do i explain this i like to know the step by step mm. i do i i think you need to know the step by step so like you say I, like you say we're single like you're shooting you get your grip you're close to the hip mm -hmm. head under the chin make sure your head's on the if it's on the outside it's not too low so you're not guilty i like to know like you say step by step and then if something's going to go wrong or if you've done something wrong, how do you rectify that and chain it all together? Just like you say, go from A to B to C or if I need to go A to C to B, B to A. Do you get round? Do you get yeah, round? Yeah, right? yeah, definitely, yeah. As I say, it's a very hard one to articulate, especially when we're listening. So the way we're sort of explaining this is when 
you initially learn techniques. You can do it how I used to do it, basically by te- the name of the technique. So, for example, a single leg, you change your levels, you shoot in, you get a bump, you get a connection, you get your takedown. Step by step, then you land in a certain position, control the position. This position is called X. Whereas the way we're trying to explain it, and the way I'm trying to explain it specifically, is instead of going in so much detail of calling everything every single step, it's a case of, okay, if I grab one leg, he's hopping on one leg. That one leg he's standing on can only support him so much. I then drop, then make a movement where he can't stop. Full stop. I then control. Yeah. Don't let that leg go in front of here. Because again, if you hear guard retention and all these transitions, you think, okay, what is this witchcraft? No. Put your legs in front of them. Yeah. Full stop. <laughs> I think that's four words, maybe five, I'm not even sure. But again, that's yeah. it. <laughs> and again, it's, yeah. just, it's to try to less is more. That's certainly something I've started appreciating. Just stop being that sort of technique name Nazi. Just do it. <laughs> just, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> just yeah, I think things can get overcomplicated, though. When you when you look at it like that, how you just put it. Yeah, if, if especially if you're a beginner. Because mm. we do get guys coming who's not done anything ever. And if... I, if someone would try and explain it in that manner to them mm. yeah they, they won't have a frigging clue they just stand scratching red like what on earth are you talking about whereas like you say if you just explained it well i've got this leg you can only bounce for so long that yeah you can mm. you can get that around your head quick enough now the so, way you yeah. learn techniques and like to drill techniques do you do the full do you do full sequences is it action reaction so for example do you do would you prefer a takedown into a pin into a submission all in the same sort of flow or is it just a case of here's the one technique and here's variations of the same technique to finish it how would you prefer to draw in that sense uh, we we do different variations so like you say if you're going into one technique mm. and if i don't know say you've I don't know what technique can we go with. So, for example, I sh- I'm going to show every MMA class ever. I'm going to show you an overhand right into a double leg. We're going to hit yeah. the wall. I'm going to take you down, and I've got a knee on belly for ground and pound finish. Would yeah. you prefer that, or would you prefer here's a different setup for that same double leg and a control to finish that double leg? That, that's oh, sort of different. Way. Yeah, different. That's yeah, like, we- you prefer the same sort of flow start to finish a whole sequence. Would you prefer intricate details of how to finish the same thing from those different starts that's sort of oh no yeah and mm. any day i'd rather have different variations the more weapons you've got mate you like you say if you did it just that once and that's all you did what would you do if that failed exactly and you don't know any other way it's like oh fuck i'm not taking him down then that's me done <laughs> do you know what i mean it's well, the yeah, counterpoint you... to that is the Bruce Lee thing of I fear not the man who's done a thousand kicks, it's the one who's done the same kick a thousand times. And this is yeah. where it gets interesting whether or not you build on an existing skill set or you expand other ones. And this is why I'm asking these kind of questions. Because again, it doesn't really matter too much what you answer, it's more how you answer and how you prefer to understand. And this is yeah. why, the reason I ask these questions is for my own development mainly as well, because I know what I do, but I don't know what you do. I want to find out what you do and how you think do things as well. So like yeah. With your game now, like regards of expanding it, would you prefer to invest more time in what you can already do well and make that better? Or would you rather do focus on what you can't do very well and make that up to standard? What is your preference? Personally, with what I'm doing at the moment, I'd rather enhance the skills I've got at the minute. Mm. Like um, I'm, I like to wrestle. Mm. Um And I'm always constantly trying to get better at my wrestling just to be dominant. Let me stop Um, you there. How have you not got cauliflower ears? Because again, like X amount of years of training MMA, and you've got ears that are perfectly normal. Tell me your way. I I don't know, mate. They are horrible. (laughs) They are horrible things, man. (laughs) I'm just just one of them lucky guys. I I don't know. I honestly don't know. (laughs) I, I I can't give you... An answer to that, I'm afraid. This is it. But sorry, Matt, sorry to interrupt. So again, you're more of a wrestling orientation again, so we'd rather more double down on the wrestling in itself and keep that airtight. And the, the way to, I don't know, explain it more of a sense of, say, grading level, say white belt, no real understanding, and blue belt, a basic competence, and purple belt onwards is more advanced understanding. So would you yeah. say you want to go from a blue to a purple level of investment in your wrestling instead of getting your yeah, white yeah, areas def- up to a blue standard? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, like I say, that that's my game at the minute. Like I've, I mean, don't get me wrong, I can strike, mm. but it's like I was saying at the beginning, it's one of those things I'm disappointed I've not shown. Mm. Um, 
but because of my wrestling, that will open up avenues for my striking. If I if I want I want to get that good at my wrestling, so that people fear that, so then that will bring in my striking. Do you get run? Do you get run in? I definitely yeah, because again, it's how you. This is a huge thing about integrating the things together. Like this is much like, for example, the first thing I said was about the overhand right to the double leg. Prime yeah. day one linking MMA. It's things that connect. Because with your wrestling, if you can make your striking, it could be pristine traditional boxing. It could be crude MMA boxing. But if you can get your takedown from there, that's all you need. Full stop. But again, yeah. where, where I feel yourself and many people get frustrated is you have this nine minute window to show everything you've learned in like X amount of years of training. And it makes no fucking sense. Like, <laughs> like you've had like five, six fights, and collectively at the most you could have about nine minutes. That's forty-five minutes. You just show all the amount of years of training you've had. Like, how is that even possible? You know what I mean? Yeah, like you say, how do you even do that? Yeah, well, <laughs> if I give you a stage right man, now, well. if you, I give you a perfect platform right now in a cage in front of everyone, the opponent's going to let you do whatever you want to do. You show everything you're capable of. You think, okay, now what? It's not even an arrogance thing. Like it's just that much time spent doing loads of stuff. It's like what do I? It, it doesn't make any sense. There's no specific technique. Oh, I'll do an M and I or look at me. I'm fucking like wizardry. There's my black. Yeah. Up. No, it's not. It's just not the point. <laughs> and, and like you say, especially amateur MMA, because because in the three minute rounds, the pace is that quick. Normally, you'll see people just collide with each other, and that's it. It's just a mm. fucking. <laughs> it's just chaos. Like you say, you don't really get to show that patience or you settles to a lot of things. I mean, that last Antonio fight, he literally just walked at me and it's like, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, hmm. it's one of them. I mean, this is where it gets interesting in itself. And the reason I go into that side of area as well is because obviously the difference between competing versus doing it in the gym, a huge thing is the crowd and the fact of everyone else watching everything else. Like how much does sort of external things affect you in your actual performance? There's a lot of it like into your account. Do you let the nerves affect you a lot? Are you quite a person who gets, I don't know, affected by shitty comments and stuff like that? Is it something that phases you at all? Um, I'll be honest. When I very first started, yeah, I was very anxious. Like with just having a crowd there mm. because because I've uh, because I've suffered with anxiety for so many years having people watching me is a big thing. Well, well, it was a big thing. It was like, oh, people are looking at me. Oh, I couldn't cope with that. Whereas now, I'm, I'm nervous in the back, obviously. Any fighter who fighters will tell you they get nervous. And if they don't get nervous, they're lying, because everybody does. Um, but once I'm actually out there now, now I enjoy it. Once I'm actually out there, once, once the referee tells you to fight, and that first strike gets thrown, I'm all right. But, yeah, there's, there's not that much that actually bothers me when I'm fighting. The build-up, yeah, that's different. But when I'm actually fighting, no, not too bad. No. I mean, this is the thing that gets a lot of people. It's not so much the thing itself, because, again, anyone who has fought before knows it's autopilot. As soon as, like, you're in there, you don't even know you're fighting. You just sort of crack on with it. It's very autonomous. But yeah, that's, that's, that's not the nervous part. The nervous part is like the hanging around the venue, seeing your opponent. It's just sort of like, okay, cool. Okay, sick. I'm on the way there. Shit. Okay, it's yeah. real. Okay, shit, it's real. Okay, the cage is there. Okay, it's getting set up. Shit, I'm fighting soon. Shit, okay. Everyone's fighting now. And thing is, especially if you've got a title fight you know, later on in the evening, you're seeing people, think, okay, shit, they won. Oh, it's about to be me later on. It's just I'm going to lose. Okay. But yeah, exactly. Me. I mean, and you get, the thing is, you get nervous about something you, you know you're going to do. It's like, I've been training X amount of years. And why am I surprised? Like, sorry to interrupt. Go yeah. On. <laughs> I mean, the, the one of the worst ones I had, it was a, a Kettering show. I don't know if you'd have been there. I think I was. It was, was a, there, I think so. It, could, it very well could have been. Um, there was a guy have a heart attack. Were you at that show? I think so, yeah, because someone pulled out, yeah. Yeah, well, I was meant to fight. I was just coming out, and then the guy had the, the heart attack, so... Obviously, I'm nervous. I'm getting all worked up. And it says, oh, you're not going on now. And it's like, oh, shit. So I've had a big adrenaline dump. I ended up falling asleep under a table. I've come back round about, what, an hour and a half later. This says, oh, yeah, you can go again. So it was just bam, 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 bam. And that's the worst I've ever felt going into a fight. 
100%. because of like you say the nerves and everything being up down up down and it, oh mate that was horrible I mean, I don't know where we, where we begin with this, but what's something I want to go into then is obviously somewhat the fact, one, you're open about the anxieties in the first place. And again, a lot of people will try and reword it, do things differently. and But again, they won't face it. So regards to you facing your anxieties and how do you manage it? Because again, it's not exactly like, okay, I've cured it, it's gone. It's a managing thing. It's a case of, you know, you feel certain things, you deal with it in different ways. Like, What's been the biggest way you found to, I don't know, deal with your anxieties and manage to manage them? Um. Well, training for one. I mm. mean, training, exercise makes anybody feel better. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, with the actual, like if I'm having a bad day, what I started doing, like like with my techniques and everything, I'll journal them. And what I'll do, I'll categorise them. Um, like, can I control it? Can't I control it? Is it a rational thought? Uh, what's the likelihood of this scenario happening do you know what I mean like mm. as soon as I put stuff onto paper or I speak about it that's when I start to calm down because it's no longer just wobbling around in my head mm. do you know what I mean it, like I say there's this stigma and people don't talk about what's going off with them but I, I don't see what the problem is Pers that's me personally like as soon as I talk to somebody or I get something out and I write it down I feel 10 times better but again, that's just me. It might not work for everybody, but that's just me. Well, this is where I feel managing anxiety is definitely that's a very good way of handling it in the sense of a lot of what anxiety tends to stem from is a fear of what might happen, a sort of anticipation. It's like a preemptive thing. But then yeah. if you can articulate, okay, what am I actually concerned about? Like, albeit it might be completely irrational, but what is the thing I'm worried about happening? Is it worried about someone saying something, doing something? Okay, then what if that actually happens? Then what? Okay, that doesn't sound yeah. so cool. But again, it's a speculation that makes it so unbearable. And I feel where stigma for these come from as such is if you say mental health, we know it could be a spectrum from anything, but a lot of people see it as, okay, they are then quote unquote mental. It's they're in a straight jacket, they're dangerous or whatever else they've got psychotic episodes or something else. I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a colossal spectrum to say I suffer from mental health. Doesn't mean, so it doesn't mean anything in the sense of it doesn't really explain anything. It just could be anything. And that's sort of the, the point with the sentiment. And that's why it's so interesting. The more people who can reach out about and explain these things, because the worst thing you could ever do is lie about it and change it because then you add layers on top of it. Now, regards of, competing with anxiety then because that's another thing in itself which is like <laughs> whether you suffer with it or not i mean you're going to suffer with it then whether you like it or not like how does how do you manage that because again like you get your nervous energy your adrenaline dumps and competing but how do you do it on the actual day itself and how do you find you even your cardio holds up with that kind of nerves uh, I'll, I'll be dead honest the once once i've got that first round out of the way i'm not too bad Mm. Like um, I, I can level myself out, kind of thing. But yeah, that then first couple of couple of minutes, it's yeah, it's me. Ed's just just trying. I'm trying to even figure out like what am I doing? Mm. Like, I'm in a cage fighting somebody. What? Why? <laughs> why am I doing this? Why? Do you know what I mean? It's a good question. <laughs> why? <laughs> I mean, I won't be the only one saying that, but I mean, I'm probably one of the only ones who'll admit that. Like I'm, I'm, well, I honestly, I, I do question why I'm even there sometimes. Well, I'm I know that question. There. I'll ask you that question right now. Why? Why do you compete? Why do you do it? Obviously, there's a plethora of reasons, but why is your specific reason for you to train and compete? Go on. What is the reason that keeps me... you in there? Go on. Well, I, obviously, I want to be the best person I can be, but. One of the main reasons is I'm I'm not bad at fighting. I'm all right. I feel like I, I can I can make a bit of money doing it. And one thing I want to do is look after my family. Mm. I want to pay my mum's mortgage off. I want to put food on my table, and I I just want to be able to live comfortably. That's top and bottom on it, mate. I'm not going to be one of them who says, "Oh, I want to be the best in the world." I'd be happy to, definitely, but it won't be the end of the world for me if I'm not. Mm. I won't drive myself mad to get to that extreme but if i get there yeah definitely i'll be happy with it but if i don't get there i'll be happy with it as long as my family's looked after 
I'm I'm good. Do you know what I mean? That that's me. <laughs> I respect that a lot, and a huge thing behind that is something you said there. I don't think you realize how important that was. That some people have goals and say like you you're not all in, you're not you want to be UFC. There's no point in doing it, that kind of stuff. I mean, that's just nothing. The fact you've got your own why, your own reason for doing that, and you believe that and you mean that, that's the difference. The fact it's yeah. whatever it specifically is, is fairly arbitrary. But what you've got your own sincere one, you've not got one you've seen someone else have, you've got one you've got. That's the difference. When push comes to shove, yeah. that's the thing that's going to make the difference. If you see yeah. Ice Holloway something, saying something cool, you're like, oh, I'm going to believe that. So no, when you're scared shitless, you don't mean that. You say what you want, you don't mean it. You know what you're getting there for. You know what yeah. you're getting in bed for. <laughs> As a big yeah, that, well, that's exactly it, mate. Like you say, I know what I want. So, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, regards of post-fighting itself. So, again, win, lose, or whatever. How are you after the fight? Are you a case of you have a bit of time off training? Are you back in the gym straight away? Do you rest at all? Or you want to switch off and reflect? Like, what is a post-fight? Uh, How do I break down for you as in the sense of, like, emotionally, physically, and sort of plans in general, really? I'm, well, generally, I'll have, like, a week off. Mm maybe half a week depending on how I feel because um, like I say I, I like exercise I like training if I'm sat at home I'll just get bored um, but emotionally I get really down if I'm honest mm. because it's like you literally dedicate your whole life for 8, 10, 12 weeks whatever you do for this one specific night and then once that's done it's like well now what mm. I ain't got no to get up for tomorrow. Do, do you get around? Do you get around? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I've got nothing else to get up for now. It's like the the day after fight, I'll get up, but I, I could I could happily just lie in bed all day. It's like I ain't got to do shit. But like I've got literally nothing that will get me out of bed. Now. Do you get what I mean? And that's oh, that's why fighting's important to me because it gets me up. It gives me something to do. It gives me that drive. If I didn't have fighting, I, I honestly don't know what I'd do. This is it's one of them. I honestly don't know what I'd do. I mean, this is where that point gets quite prominent because the idea of the fight in itself is terrifying as it is. As soon as it's gone, it's like, oh, now what? Literally, like, okay, all my emotions because it's a fight is an investment, it's not just a fight, it's your emotional, physical, everything. It's because, again, as much as people, the layman's will see fighting and competing, think, okay, just get in shape, you know, cut out the drinks of the weekend, we'll crack on as normal. No, 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 no. Your fight, your, it's not just the hours in the gym you're putting, it's the anxiety building up to it, it's the bad sleep, it's waking up early, it's crying, it's sacrificing things, it's missing out on stuff, it's pissing off your missus and your family and stuff, saying, no, I can't have dinner with you lot, I've got to go for a run, got to do this. Yeah. But then, then what? After the fact, the thing is, like, win, lose, or whatever else, like, fuck me, it's still pretty miserable the next day. It's like, okay. I remember when I lost, won my last one, I was over it before I left the cage. I think, okay, this is a bit shit. Like, because I got knocked out by CJ in the November and I won the pool in the March. I was like, okay, I don't feel much different. Well, obviously a lot less knocked out, but you know, it's all right. <laughs> you, you honestly don't though, do you? That's yeah, the thing. Like, once it's over, like like you say, win, lose or draw, once it's over, it's like, ugh, right, what now? Like, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I was buzzing about winning the belt. Like the belt I won. I was absolutely buzzing. But after a day or two, it was like, well, now I'm a champion. I thought I was meant to feel a bit... Yeah, a different person. A bit different, like some things were meant to change. But no, I, I didn't feel any different. Like, yeah, it's a weird one, mate. It's weird to try... It's weird to try and to explain to somebody who doesn't fight, I think. Mm. Like the casual fans. Like, like you say, it's not just getting in the gym for eight weeks and dieting. Like you say, you try and explain the anxieties, the mental battles you go through, and they won't have a clue what you're talking about. Mm. I think it's just a fight. It's, you know, you just get to party every Saturday night, you know, I just call people cunts and, you know, go in the car park and we're sorted. So, no, no, yeah. no, 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 It is everything. No. It is horrible. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's one of those ones, man. It's horrible. Do you feel going pro is more an extension of that? Because, again, the sort of, the champion, the belt status in itself was more, okay, this is the next sort of rung on the ladder, the next challenge for me to get that sense of purpose, but now going pro is that further step. Do you feel it's something like that? Am I right in saying that? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, mm. that's, yeah, that's fair to say. Yeah. 
the reason I'm sort of saying that in itself, again, it, it makes sense in the sense of your, I keep saying sense, but as to say, you're building up in certain increments, again, the sort of challenge and resistance. So the way you're at X level, okay, now it's getting boring because I can achieve this level, but now what? There's another high as such. There's another thing to go for. Like who, it's a very introspective question, but who are you in that sense? Are you a fighter? Are you your own person? A fight's a separate thing. Like, how do you find that kind of shift between MMA is my passion, it's a hobby, whatever you want to call it. How much of that is you as a representation? Uh, no, I think it is my passion. It's mm. like I say, it's, it is what I get up for. Mm. I, I love when I wake up, it's the first thing I think of. Do you know what I mean? I, mm. I am putting my life into it. Like literally everything I do, it is around fighting. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I, I want to get, I want to get up there. That's why I'm taking these steps. I don't want to hang about. I want to get up there and I want to achieve what I've set out to do. Like I said to you, what I've set out to do, that's what I want to do. And I want to get the ball rolling and get there now. It's as simple as that, mate. I'm up for that challenge. I've got nothing to lose. Mm. I've got everything to gain. I've got nothing to lose. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm confident in myself. And that's the main thing you need in this sport, I think. If you don't believe in yourself, you're no good to anybody. Oh, this is literally one of the first things we said in the podcast was about this. And that's a huge point that if you don't believe what you're saying, who else is going to believe it? I'm not going to believe if you don't believe it. And exactly. when it comes to you going pro, and the reason I asked that question in itself, as much as it seemed a bit sort of, I don't know, overarching and quite a weird way to go about it, it's more some people want to progress out of desperation for an identity that if I don't have fighting, I am no person. I'm, I'm just, you know, what am I? Whereas if you've got your own sort of thing, I am my own person and this is a separate thing. I love it. My heart's invested in it, but this isn't me. This is something I do because I love it. Because when people say to me, all I've got is fighting and nothing else, that doesn't scream passion. That screams sort of desperation. Whereas for you just then saying, you know what, well, I'm my own person and this is my passion separately, there's a big difference. I choose yeah. to get up. I choose to do something I love. That's a huge difference. That is a massive difference. Yeah. There. If you want yeah. to do it and you go out and do it, crack on. If you only have to do it, like that's, that's that's an obligation. That's a job you don't want to do. That's a very different thing. It's a horrible thing. Yeah, that's not enjoyable. If if you have yeah. to do it, yeah, you can't enjoy that, surely. <laughs> and that's my point. Um, with the fights in themselves and the training and everything else, what do you think motivates you more? The the winning itself or the fear of losing? Uh, I'd, I'd personally say the fear of losing. Mm. I've done it once and it's honestly the I don't worst. It. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the worst feeling, mate, I've ever had in my life. And I'll do anything to avoid that again. I mean, of it, it will come. Everybody, everybody loses. It's it's not boxing. You don't need that perfect record, but it's that old cl that old cliche. D uh, records are for DJs. They are indeed. You know what I mean? But yeah, I'm I'm terrified of losing. I hate it. But you need you should be terrified of losing in this sport. It's a competitive sport. You want to win at all costs. I feel it's mutual. Like, <laughs> this is the problem, though. You know, you know what I mean. Now, with that being said, then, after having lost, how was that experience for you to then come back and get stuck in and compete again? Because, again, it's very flippant saying, you know, the whole story is, oh, I lost this fight and I came back and I won. People hear that and that's a soundbite. It's gone. There's, it's just a soundbite. It's here for a couple of words. I think I'm motivated. Cool, I'm going to go for my run. They don't know what that means. What did it mean to you to come back from your initial loss to come back to your next fight? What was that transition like? I don't, I'd honestly say that's my biggest achievement in fighting if I'm honest. Because um, it, 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 like you say, it does sound that simple as, oh, I lost and I didn't compete for a while. But it was in that time when I got, that's when I got diagnosed with my anxiety disorders. I had, um, in, in that lead up to that fight, like, I think it was three times, I had a very close family member try, try committing themselves three times so I had all that going up to the fight I didn't even want to fight on the day I had that much going off in me head. I didn't even want to be there so to then 
lose to deal with that, plus everything else, what will go in off, to then come back and win, mate, that, that was huge for me. Like I say, I'd, that was bigger than winning any belt for me, personally, because that's something not anybody can achieve. Some people, it'll make and break you. You see it. Do you know what I mean? Some people lose a fight and that, oh, it's not for me. But I hung on in there and I'm in the position I'm in today. As much as I appreciate your honesty and openness, if there's anything you want me to take out after the fact that it's a bit too personal to me, you don't want to say, I appreciate that at all. But again, so much respect for you being so open with dealing with all these different things that have gone on in your life and in your world. Who, mm. How do you manage them in the sense of, do you speak to someone else? Is it something you sound off to yourself? Have you got someone you speak to outside of the fighting world in general? Is it a coach? Who do you reach out to when you have these kind of, I'm going to say, instances and is a problem as such depends how you manage it obviously but instances uh, it's mainly family mate if I'm honest it's normally mm. my mum my brother my dad do you know what I mean it's 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 my family if if I've got anything like that I'll always go to my family my family's always there for me and like I say that's why I want to look after them with fighting if I can make their lives a lot better and a lot more comfortable I will do you know what I mean? That I do a lot of this for them. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's as simple as that, really. I mean, it kind of makes sense, though, the sort of people you're doing it for, the people you would go to for help as well. Like, it makes sense, because, again, otherwise, if it's not a, a mutual kind of relationship in that sense, that you're trying to help them, they're trying to help you to then help them backwards, is then a very, like, a, a guilt thing as such, that I am I have to do this for you because I feel like I have to pay you back something. But, again, it's a very back and forth it's a very supportive relationship both ways because again yeah. like regards of income and all that kind of stuff and supporting people further down the line the general i'm going to say journey because it's a cliche but it is what it is the length the length of time of training at the experiences the, the losses and coming back again that that layer of resilience you build up is there's there's no words for it really and it's so remarkable to hear someone like yourself be so honest and so open about that kind of stuff because for people who don't compete or haven't competed and haven't had to face their family, their friends and everyone else in between after a loss and after everything else, fuck me, it's heavy going. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not what you want. <laughs> it's not what you want to offer anyone. No, it's, mate, definitely not. And again, I appreciate you so much for your time, my friend. Um, social media, where can people find you? Uh, Instagram is Jakey Stark. And on Facebook, it's just Jake Stark. I've not got Twitter or anything. I can't wrap my head around Twitter yet. I need to, need to learn how to do it. <laughs> so good. Thank you so much for your time, my friend. Be sure to check him out. Check out our sponsors, the, uh, the English Hypnotist, available on all social media platforms. For any sort of development on your sort of mental side of things, whether it's a business, the fighting world, it's fantastic. Obviously, Fisticuffs merch on route. We've got the rash guards on the way. We've got the shorts, mask as well. And be sure to stay tuned on the Fisticuffs underscore podcast page on Instagram and all social media platforms.